is a CowVision special report. Hello, I'm Sharon Marshall in Port of Spain, Trinidad. There's something about news reporting, particularly television news, that tends to present events in absolute terms. Either all is well with the world or it is not. The recent coup attempt here in Trinidad was no exception. It saddens me to know that in these issues, the issue The government of Trinidad and Tobago have been overthrown. They destroyed the whole town. They didn't have to, um, they looted it, uh, uh, was one problem, but they didn't have to burn it, you know? That didn't make no sense because now thousands of people have that job. Yeah. yeah they, like, they went mad, you know? These were the images of Trinidad and Tobago, which the world saw at the end of July and in the first days of August. But these are the images which we usually associate with the land of the hummingbird. And this, too, is Trinidad, the peace and tranquility of the Carony Bird Sanctuary. When the world learned of the attempted coup of July 27th and the civil disorder which followed, it did so through images which might have suggested that the entire city of Port of Spain had been destroyed. So that the visitor today might be surprised to see that there are still stores standing. Stores which remained untouched by the looting, which have goods to offer shoppers. Twenty stores were destroyed and twenty-seven damaged. While the property loss and the resulting unemployment are significant, the final estimate of the damage has come in at under the 300 million Trinidad and Tobago dollars projected. Physical damage was uh, limited to just one area of downtown Port of Spain. And apart from that, uh, while internationally, in the international press, I think from a lack of true understanding and true research about Trinidad and Tobago, while they have created a picture that is uh, far worse than, than what it is, let us look at some of the rea realities. According to official estimates of the fire services, the extent of the damage by fire and looting amounted to 225 million TT dollars, which in terms of uh, US dollars is about 50 million. The damage was limited to the distributive trade in particular. What has not been emphasized, or what I would like to emphasize, is that the productive base of the economy, the petroleum sector, the manufacturing sector, the industrial zones, the industrial estates, they has been, these have remained untouched. Work continues to repair the damage done to the Red House while it was under siege, but perhaps it will take longer to restore its honor as the seat of parliamentary democracy. The roof is leaking in several places, obviously because of the heavy gun fire to which the building was subjected. So that there is leakage all over the place, you have burst pipes, Air conditioned units were shot at as a result. Uh, you, you've got extensive flooding. The, the chamber, the parliamentary chamber itself, is a story on its own. It is complete desecration. The dishonor that has been brought to the integrity of the People's Parliament, it is incredible, unbelievable. You know, the mace, for example, which is inscribed on that mace, 1899. <laughs> and the thing is completely broken up. The mace for the Senate chamber, which was not in the chamber, one may say that, well, the mace was in use at the time, the mace for the House of Representatives. That was also taken up and broken up. The robes are nowhere to be found. Uh, all the 
whatever we have there that stands for ceremony uh, that allows for the dignity of the people's power. More particularly the mace. You see, the mace symbolizes the authority of the people. The people give, it is, it is symbolic of the, the authority that pe the people in this country have given to those whom they have chosen to look after their affairs. As I say, it's complete destruction. The chamber can never function as it is present. It needs complete refurbishing. I do not know whether uh, the public knows that those who were held hostage, they were required to use the floor of the parliament as, as bathrooms, so that it is not merely um, water law, but you know, urine soaked and all that. A tremendous amount of humiliation um, to which those people who were held as hostages were subjected. Across the way, the burnt-out police headquarters is a stark reminder of the assault on democracy. But right next door, construction of a new headquarters building continues. Across town, Trinidad and Tobago Television still shows the scars of its capture and recapture, and soldiers stand guard. Initially, there was some concern that the image of unrest might have cost the country some much-needed foreign investment. But Minister of Industry, Enterprise and Tourism, Dr. Bo Tawari, is now certain that it hasn't. Morgan Grenfell, for instance, from London, they have written, they, in fact, they wrote quite early uh, after we had um, put down the um, attempted coup and the seizure of parliament by the uh, rebels. And following that, a number of investors we had from the Yangmen Corporation, which is a Hong Kong-based company, who are interested in putting down a plant here. Um, we had, uh, that's a positive response, they are coming in September. The Project 8 Corporation, which is a Japanese corporation with whom uh, I had signed, in fact, a day before the attempted um, coup in Trinidad, I had signed with them a $37 million U.S. project involving a local uh, company, Luxam Industries. And they were scheduled to come here on August the 25th. They are now coming on September the 27th, but they are coming. And they are also interested in probing other areas of investment. Uh, some corporations in India, which was the first, I recently, I should say, had spent some time visiting Toronto, uh, New York, and some of the key areas in the Far East, uh, New Delhi, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia. We hope to have a delegation here coming with the Minister of Finance from Malaysia, the Finance Minister's Conference, a small delegation. And uh, basically, people have expressed some concern and have wanted reassurances. Uh, but generally, I don't think that they have taken the events uh, too negatively. And more than that, I think they see it as something which happened but is not likely to have a long-term effect on the economy, on, on growth prospects, or on the diversification and expansion thrust of Trinidad and Tobago. We've spoken about investors coming here, but what about Trinidadian citizens? Do you think there will be a flight of capital in the wake of this event? I personally don't think so. Uh, that is always a danger in a situation like this. But I think we need to understand that the whole world has been topsy-turvy in the last few years. Uh, people have witnessed what has happened in Eastern Europe, what uh, the situation in China. Uh, there have been so many upheavals in various parts of the world, including in our own hemisphere. And generally, I think people have a greater sense now that the world is a world of turbulence and we have to cope with difficulties, international terrorism, international drug trafficking, uh, the trafficking of arms across national boundaries. And people understand as well that the marketplace has changed. You're dealing with one global marketplace, virtually one financial system. Uh, production systems are not limited by national boundaries anymore. People put plants wherever uh, they find the best prospects. And um, as a result, I think the whole thinking in the, in the business community globally uh, is changing. And as a result, I think that has an effect on the business community here. I think people understand if you leave Trinidad and Tobago and you go somewhere else, there's no real assurance of, uh, of, of security. I mean, you can get shot in the streets in New York or Toronto or anywhere else. 
and I think also that people have a, a genuine commitment to the country now, which I sense is greater than it has ever been. There was also some concern that the Twin Island Republic's effort to develop a tourism industry might have been disrupted. No cruise ships have in fact actually cancelled their visit to Trinidad. The only one who cancelled was the Cunard Line, Cunard Countess Line, but they have put, put it on a two-month review. So they have not actually cancelled uh, as such. And all the others have indicated that they will be coming to Trinidad in terms of the plan program for 1990-1991. The first test came with the regional track and field championships of the World Association of Veteran Athletes scheduled for the National Stadium August 23rd to 26th. It was the first international event in Trinidad since the attempted coup. And even though there were some cancellations, the games were held with approximately 300 senior participants from 10 countries. I waited to see what was happening, to see if um, things were really, the unrest was really high. And when I heard the word that uh, the games were going to be held and we could still come, I decided, well, I've paid my money, I want to come, so I, I came on. We congratulate ourselves for coming here. You have a beautiful country. The people are lovely and very friendly, everybody. And uh, we didn't see, any, no, didn't see any problems. The things that we see on TV home, back home, it's not the same like what is happening right now. But sister, that everything is quiet. On the TV back home, you see, it looks like they still have a lot of riots and so on going on. So I think everything is quiet in this country. Commonwealth finance ministers meet here in September. The regional economic conference is on for November, and culture minister Jennifer Johnson is promising the best carnival ever next year.